All right, welcome into Study Ball. And this Study Ball is going to be a reaction to the Bills firing Ken Dorsey yesterday. Now, one of my biggest pet peeves with social media and where our society is right now is that when you defend one person, that everybody thinks that you're criticizing or condemning another person. I never like to work that way. Sometimes it's just about defending one side of things. And yes, sometimes there's collateral damage that you, you have to point out some issues with somebody else in doing so, but this is really just to talk about Ken Dorsey and how it didn't make sense to me why they made that move. With all the success that they had had, success that they had had earlier in the year, and yeah, things aren't going great right now, but it's not just on one person. When I look at an offense coordinator, I say to myself, their job is to get guys open uh, for their players to be able to make plays. Now, we can talk about creativity, and we can talk about you could do this different, or you could do that. I get it. But the bottom line is, are guys getting open? Are you putting your players in positions to make plays? And then the players have to make those plays. And so uh, as we take a look at the Bills offense, uh, I just want to show you what I'm seeing. And a lot of people, oh, well, you're going to attack Josh Allen. I'm not going to attack Josh Allen. I think Josh Allen is one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. I don't believe that he's playing his best football right now. And you got to figure out why. And maybe that's Part of why they let Ken Dorsey go was because Josh isn't playing his best football right now. But to me, it's always a collective effort. When you've had success and then all of a sudden things start to fall off, it's not just pointing the finger at one guy. I've seen it too often in this business where one person becomes the scapegoat. And again, maybe there's more going on. Maybe there's things that I don't know about. But just watching the film, I didn't agree with this move. Let's dive into the tape and let me show you what I'm seeing. And let me just say early on here, yes, this, a lot of this tape is going to be things where the Bills don't succeed offensively. Doesn't mean they didn't succeed. Doesn't mean Josh Allen didn't make a lot of great plays in this game or reads or good throws, the tipped interception, all of that stuff. It doesn't mean that Josh isn't playing well. All I'm going to show is that we're asking, is the offensive coordinator getting guys open for the team to have success? That to me should be the bottom line and the prerequisite to having a job or not having a job. Okay, so here's one of the early plays in the game. Okay, we're gonna run a typical concept, poco, post, corner, flat. Okay, so one of the things to me with Josh is that he's rushing through things that he didn't rush through earlier in the year. So on this particular play, what we're trying to do is really get a high low over here on this flat defender. Okay, good pocket back there right now and see it, okay? Let's see it right there. Now, yes, there's some, some pressure coming. Okay, pressure coming there, but this is normally a throw right now that Josh makes because it, this declared itself early. We're throwing the corner out. You know, another thing is always watch a quarterback. See how quickly Josh is set here? Okay, so this is something that I see all around the league is that quarterbacks are getting set because we're so much in shotgun so quickly. So he's set quickly, he feels like he needs to throw the ball quickly. I'm set, I'm ready, why am I not throwing the football? So we get impatient. We need to tie our drop to this throw. Not a flat throw because the first throw is down the field. We need to tie our drop to the deep throw. So when we get there, we should have our read. We should be able to one hitch and get the ball out and it keeps us away from the pressure. So you see why Josh can be impatient here. He's taken two or three hitches, now gets out, tries to get to this late, almost intercepted there on a play that was really open from the get-go. Okay, so another thing, you know, everybody's complaining about, you know, Stefan Diggs doesn't get enough targets. Okay, this is one of these plays where it's just mirrored routes. So we're simply running comebacks, deep stops, whatever you want to call them on the outside. And for Josh, this is really just pick a side. Okay, sometimes you like matchups. Patrick Sertan is on the top against Stefan Diggs. I'm not going to go there, I'm going to go to the other side. But whatever the reason, okay, so this is just pick a side, okay? So now we could say, well, you could throw to Stephon Diggs because, you know, there's an option to throw it over there. I understand the matchup problem. So you say, I'm going to go to my secondary guy where I, I like the matchup better. A little banging at the top, some sort of miscommunication here on the throw. But guys open one-on-one. -on -one. Guys have to win those one-on-one -on -one routes in those situations, Okay, so on this particular play, looking to get the one-on-one, -on -one, what we're gonna run over here is we're gonna run a double move. 
an out, and an up. So we're going to start here as a quarterback, see if we get the right situation, a one-on-one -on -one back there, and that guy wins. He doesn't win, so we've got, if he doesn't win, I should say, we've got this route coming. So we're going to look at the double move. We don't have it. Now we've got a cross to a shallow coming on that side. Okay? We get rotation down. Boom. Exactly what we want. Safety back in the middle. This safety dropping down. One-on-one -on -one right here with the double move. Okay? Check out the double move. Wins. Wins. He's winning. Okay? Again, Josh is just impatient here. He's looking to make a play instead of settling in and reading this out. So you've got one Okay, if you like it, take your shot. Okay, two's coming right into his vision with a good pocket, just again, a little bit impatient, right? And again, does this all fall back on the fact that he's not comfortable with the plays they're calling, not comfortable with what they're doing? Maybe, maybe that's part of it. And maybe that's the question we need to ask is, Josh, why are you getting impatient with stuff that early in the year he wasn't impatient? He was playing great football, getting the ball out on time and really doing well and something has changed along the way, okay? So we get a little bit of play action right here, okay? On this play action, we're gonna run a hook over the ball, then we're gonna run a deep curl, and then we've got our back going out here. So again, I'm not in the room, don't know how they read this exactly, but when you pick up on little things is, this guy's route is shorter than this guy's route. That usually tells me, hey Josh, you're gonna read the inside guy first, so you can be on time to the inside guy. Then you're gonna to get to the outside guy because he's gonna be deeper. You can get to him on time, and then you can get to your check down after that. Again, not necessarily how they do it. Maybe they say read outside curl to inside curl to swing. Maybe so, but if we're reading it inside out, there's a shot. That's what we wanted. Play action, pull the guys up, split the middle. We've got our shot down the middle. There to be had if you want it. Okay, doesn't like it, kicks it out to a swing. Again, we get a positive play, but there's an opportunity there for a bigger play that we just don't get there. Okay, we're gonna go to an empty set here. All right, so we got double slant back to this side. Double slant, okay. We got a cop player right here, so normally I don't really like the inside one, so we're really just saying, hey, win, on the outside and I'm gonna take the outside slant. There it is, there it is. Josh looks, he's looking at it. He's ready to throw. He's, he, I'm not sure what takes him away from the win on the slant over here. Play is there to be had. We got exactly what we want. Doesn't throw it, throws it late. Again, this one's gotta be caught, no question about it. Makes a play, drops it. But you see again the hesitation. And again, what I'm talking about more than anything is that guys are open on these plays. They're just not executing the plays um, the way that I know Ken Dorsey wanted them to execute it, the way that Josh Allen wants to execute it. And the question has to be why more than, oh, the scheme's not good. And again, like I said, maybe this is a Ken Dorsey, Josh Allen thing, and this move needed to happen, but I'm not so sure. Okay, so this is their favorite play okay and I'm gonna take a second just to teach on this play because I love this play okay so this is a play we call under so it's here and then Stefan Diggs runs a quick under and everybody is saying oh well they shouldn't run this play as much and everybody knows what they're gonna do well go watch Philadelphia play AJ Brown runs this play 10 times a game just like Stefan Diggs does because they're successful with it you don't just go away from something because uh, oh well we do it a lot no they're successful with it so they do it okay and then over the top, they usually run an in. Now, the way we used to run this play is we would have the in up over the top as well. So we would have an under, and it would be four zone coverage. So if we had one zone defender here, we could read high-low. Okay, now let's take an NFL course in the under concept. Okay, we eventually changed it. So we have under here, and we would let this guy push up to 12 yards. When he got to 12 yards, he would read the defender inside of him. If the defender inside of him carried him, okay, so carried him to his depth, that 12 yard depth, he could break out of it now. Okay, so it was a read for him. If nobody chased him up the field, he went inside so we could high low the zone defender underneath him or whatever that may be, okay? If it's zone and that guy carries him to 12 yards and he breaks out, shouldn't matter, we should be throwing the underneath guy anyways. But if we get man like this, 
we push up and if Stefan Diggs is getting jammed and carried inside, boom, we break outside. So it's a combination of two different plays that Buffalo has both of the plays, what I call 72, which is a corner in and under, or it would be 42 with an in and an under. But you can't combine them together and teach this. Now you've got the best of both worlds. So here, right? I don't know. I, I get it. He is jammed right here. But then if Dawson Knox, or I guess that's Kincaid maybe, there is, uh, is pressed up to that point, he breaks outside. We've got a great window to throw it outside. I just wanted to hit that play because they run that play a lot. I get it. It didn't win necessarily here, but it wins most of the time. Nice job by Josh to get through it, get a check down, get something positive right there. But I wanted to teach that concept because, I don't know, Ken Dorsey or any offense coordinator sees that and goes, hey, man, that's a great addition to that play. So we've got both a zone beater and a man beater, and we don't have to try to guess which one we're getting. Okay, so this is the interception at the end of the half. Okay, and so it's just, again, it's another one of those pick asides. We're just going to run deep corner routes, bench routes, I call them, and we're just going to pick a side and take a shot. Okay, and so biggest thing here is just, I think Josh just has to be a touch quicker on this because it happens so fast. We don't have a lot of room out here. If we're waiting until the guy is breaking on his route, and, and again, it's a tough route, not one of my favorite routes to throw because uh, it's hard to see outside leverage and then know he's going to cross him and you know again just just a bad throw here by josh i know he wants to have this one back anticipated maybe something else a little bit deeper just miss it uh in this situation but i just wanted to show the concept there and uh you know what a lot of people do in that two minute type situation try to get out of bounds try to get the deep uh the deep bench routes okay so um you know, saw Dan Orlowski break this down. And so this is, we'll back it up. Okay, so they're going to motion across and they're going to run a play we call mesh. Everybody runs mesh. Everybody loves mesh. I'm not a big mesh fan. It's a hook here. It's a shallow, a shallow. That's our mesh concept. This guy going out to the flat. The back is running kind of a bullet shoot route back here. And we're calling this against man-to-man -man coverage. That's what this play is for. It's not very good against zone, which you're going to see right here. Um, and it's one of the reasons I don't like it because it doesn't have good man and zone beaters. So if you happen to not get the tendency that's man in a short yardage situation, they get zone. Now you've got to have an answer for it. Okay. And so, you know, a lot of people say, well, you didn't get man. Nobody chased him across. We've got to change this play. Well, maybe, but there's a lot of teams out there that don't change the play. You make it work against zone. So what do you do? Okay. So the first thing is, remember, we've got a flat out here. This is fourth and one. So we've got a flat out here. So all I need is one yard on the flat, okay? On the other side, we have this shoot. Once again, both of these guys can become first options for you if you get the spacing that you want. So usually with this shoot, if you throw it, you throw it right now. It's almost like a quick swing route or becomes a quick flat route that if this defender and you have that much depth between them, just put it on your back and he has to make a tackle in the open field and you get a first down. The other side, same thing. This corner backs up. Here's the flat defender. If this flat defender gets any depth at all, put it on your flat and you've got an option to start this thing. So pick a side. Let's pick the back side. Boom, right there. Okay, if you can put the ball on the back right there, he's got to go to this line, one-on-one -on -one with the backer. You've got an opportunity. Okay, we can teach a lot of different things on this play. I'd love to see the back get a little bit Flatter and wider first here, so we can just stay away from the defensive end. But regardless, a lot of teams do it like this, but there's an option. Okay, look at the other side. Okay, the other side. All we need is a, a step. A step on this outside defender that's four or five yards away. We put a good ball on our tight end right there. We got to count on him to make that guy miss. That's where this play starts. And then from there, it goes to this mesh. And again, we've got zone coverage. We got guys inside all over. I agree, not a good concept against zone coverage, not a lot happening right there, but there were options quick and early, no matter how we doctored it up or the fact that they didn't run man with us, we still should have some options to throw it. Instead, Josh has to go try to make a play again, and unfortunately, this is one of those times that he doesn't make the play, and so now we can criticize the fourth and one call all we want, but there were some initial options that again not great options i get it 
A lot of coaches call a, you know, a man play against zone and you've got to have answers in your mind to be able to make it work instead of changing it every single time. Okay, so here's another play that we're just, we're gonna run, it's like a curl or a hook with a flat over here. Okay, so Josh is gonna kind of start his read over to that side, gets exactly what he wants, he gets the corner off which means when I've got the corner off, I've got an underneath defender that has to cover both the hook and the flat. Okay, so we come out and there it is. Okay, we got one guy right here, hook, flat. Who's he covering? He's covering the hook. Just take your flat right here. Everybody is inside the numbers right here. Your flat's going out there. Just settle in and take it right there. Again, there's an impatience with Josh. Maybe feels that pressure coming right there, but the ball should be out of his hands right now. And now again, it falls to make it a play. Great play by Josh. Great job. He does this all the time. He's a special player. I just want to see him do this when he has to do it, not when things are open for him. Play the game, play the play, and then be special. And that's where he's so awesome and what he was doing early in the year. And another great, awesome, special play right here on the move. But there was an easy opportunity and the game can be a lot easier just playing the play. And that's what this video is all about. Again, I'm not trying to condemn Josh Allen. I love Josh Allen. I think he's a great player. Yes, there's times you get away from playing great football. He's doing that right now. But this is more to show you what's going on offensively for this team and what the possibilities are. Okay, so here's a play. Obviously, run it a lot, double move here, and then we've got this over route coming, flat, check down, okay? So here's another one, that we get this all cleared out, this guy comes down, here's our window right here for the deep over. This is a throw that Josh makes in his sleep most of the time, okay? He got a couple steps here, lay this over into that window, take that shot. What are we seeing here? Why are we not taking the shot on this particular play? Those are the questions that I wanna ask. Not, hey, can our offense coordinator call plays to get guys open? We're seeing guys open. What's the disconnect right now? And again, maybe that is the reason that we don't have our offense coordinator anymore. Maybe there is a disconnect between these two that is causing some of this stuff, and we just have to make a change. Okay, if that's the case, I can understand that. I just want to show you that I don't believe it's because of scheme and people talking about they're not creative enough. Okay, maybe so. But are guys open? That's all I care about, okay? As a, as a uh, player, if I'm playing quarterback, hey coach, I don't care what you do. I don't care how creative you are. If guys are open, that's all I need. Give me the read, give me the guys open, and I will make the play work. So we just got a curl flat here down on the bottom. Curl flat, okay? We're gonna read flat defender, whoever that is. There's our window for the curl right here. And then we've got a shallow coming to it, if it's covered, we got a shallow coming to it. Once again, Josh is on the move already, right? This play hasn't even developed. The curl is not even turning around and he's on the move. Play it out, let it play for you, let the play work. These guys go there, okay? This guy goes there, recover to your shallow. It's all in front of you, you got good protection. Instead, we're moving and getting impatient once again and now we've got to create. Okay, so good look by Denver, bringing a bunch of guys up and then popping a bunch of guys out here at the last second. I don't know if this is a hot right here. They ended up, they end up uh, bouncing to it and, and picking it up and doing a nice job offensively. Um, so there's not a hot, but okay, let's say it's a hot. Okay, what is a hot? That means a possible free hitter coming here, so you gotta take your quick throw. Here's the quick throw right here. Okay, Josh looks over to this side. Okay, so watch when we start this thing. Right here, Josh is looking over to this side, okay? I understand there's a little contact right here, but we're gonna break out here at five yards, hold in there, make that throw. Instead, again, Josh gets impatient here and tries to turn and throw a semi-throw back here, which is really tough, because that's a timing throw. I have no problem if he picks that side originally and beats the pressure with that throw, but really hard to start one side and then go back to the other. And then you see it right here. There it is, there's the throw, the hot throw we were talking about, the way that he looked initially, it's right there for him. If he just hangs in there for a second, instead he's trying to go back, 
falling away from pressure, trying to throw late to a semi route and almost gets intercepted once again. So again, I'm going to ask, please take this video for what it was. And it was more of a defense of Ken Dorsey and what he's doing offensively and creating opportunities for players to be successful. It wasn't about Josh Allen, because obviously this was more cherry picked plays where they didn't have success. Uh, then I could have pulled a bunch of plays in this game and every game where Josh Allen is great and does great things, but there's something wrong with their offense. Everybody knows that. What is wrong with their offense? It's a disconnect between what they're trying to do offensively and where Josh is comfortable right now. And that's, to me, the question that needed to be asked. Not, oh, let's fire our offense coordinator because we're not getting it done. Because I got to start to look at the tape and go, well, there's opportunities out there. Why is it not getting done? And again, I'll say this, maybe that all falls on the offense coordinator and maybe there's a bunch of stuff that's going on that I don't know about that's causing them not to execute these plays on game day or for Josh to be uncomfortable with these plays. Okay, if that's the defense, I can understand that, somewhat get behind it. But to me, when you've had success over the last couple years and then you go through a low where you're not having great success, it happens for all players, happens for all teams. The goal to me is come together and figure out how to solve those problems because you've had success together before. That to me should be the answer, not going and making a knee jerk reaction and firing somebody after a loss, as opposed to galvanizing each other, getting together and figuring out your issues.